fairly scandalous headline has Halo fans angry and worried. Is the Halo show abandoning what makes Halo great, or are people looking a little too deep into things? We'll discuss that and more on today's video. Today's video is brought to you by the Cove Commuter 2.0. Now this is a very cool speaker, I've been trying it out for a few months now. It's got one main feature, which I think is pretty awesome, and I'll talk about that in just a second, but it's also got amazing audio quality, Bluetooth 5.0 for very fast connections, it's waterproof, it can usually last a single day on just one charge, and of course it's super portable. The Commuter 2.0's coolest feature though is that it can separate, you can use it either as one speaker to provide awesome 360 degree sound, or you can split the speaker in two, which gives you not only two sources of sound, but also an awesome stereo experience. The portability, the fast yeah, charge time, all of it together in one package is great. Away. If you're like me, sometimes you get a ravenous need for Star Wars audiobooks, the Cove Commuter will take care of you. Right now, you can get 68% off your Cove speaker by visiting coveaudio.com el67. I'll include a link to that as well down in the description. Thanks to Cove for sponsoring today's video. On with the content. Hey guys, this is Justin, hello and welcome to another video. So, the Halo TV show has been getting a bit of negative news recently, which is definitely unfortunate given that the show is meant to release in just under a week, next Thursday. The first bit of warning, I guess, was the fact that some of the early reviews for the show were less than positive. I, however, wasn't super concerned about this as we discussed in a prior video. I always thought that this show was probably not going to blow anyone away, at least with the first season, so I was actually a little bit reassured that it wasn't maybe game-changing, but also not outright awful. I'd say Halo fans are a little bit more worried, however, about a new article from Variety, and there was one specific headline that made its way quite widely around Twitter. It said specifically, we didn't look at the game, we didn't talk about the game. Halo Season 1 showrunner Stephen Kane says his prep with the game's developer 343, we talked about the characters in the world, so I never felt limited by it being a game. Now, I want to say after reading the article that that quote is out of context and that you don't have any reason to worry, but I'm not sure I can honestly say say that, and this is, I think, a well-founded fear that a lot of video game fans have generally, especially when they see their favorite video game being adapted to some other medium, there's always the worry that the adaptation is going to lose the spirit and the quality that makes the original thing so good. For Halo, a lot of us were worried that a translation to TV would see the game's mythology and its sci-fi slash military sci-fi roots extinguished, and quotes like this don't necessarily help. It feels like they don't care about the tone of the game or what the game was actually like, which is what a lot of us fell in love with. Let's talk about the article though. So for me, I guess the first concerning revelation within the article is that the director of the show, whose name is Otto Bathurst, had never actually played Halo before. The same was true of Schreiber, who's playing Master Chief. Honestly, I couldn't care about that less. He's an actor. I like him as an actor, so that's whatever. But the fact that the director is not familiar with the source material is honestly a little bit concerning. If I were in charge of making a Halo TV show, Show, I would want somebody who understands what we love about the games to be directing at least the pilot for the first season. And that's because Halo and really all stories are more than just their lore or their world building. There's a feeling that the games have. And I want somebody who's in love with that feeling to also be making the adaptation. Anyway, we can talk about this later. The article goes on to mention the past failed Halo projects, most famously the Neil Blomkamp Halo project, which sort of evolved into District 9, and talking about how for a long time, one of the major sticking points, somewhat ironically, was that Microsoft didn't seem very willing to move away from the source material. I say irony, but that's really the wrong word. It seems like the show is actually only getting done because 343 and Microsoft were able to be a bit more flexible on how closely an adaptation to stick to the source material, and obviously we are seeing some pushback from Halo fans, as we'll continue to talk about throughout this video, but we'll have to see how that trend translates to regular audience interest. The article takes a turn though and talks about how the showrunners actually did invest themselves quite heavily into Halo's backstory before they started working. It talks about how they visited 343 and that they spent several days in Seattle really immersing themselves in the background and the mythology of Halo. Now, whether that's just something they're saying to appease the fans, I don't know. Can you realistically invest yourself in a mythology as deep as Halo's in just a few days? I don't know. What's clear though is that 343 
3 was not going to be leading production on this. They would be collaborating with the showrunners, but this would not be a 343 story. This would not be a straight adaptation of something that already existed. The stuff we already knew, we learned in this article that that was at Kiki Wolfkill's direction and that she also acknowledged that they're really only going to have one shot to make this show work. So moving on to the inflammatory quote that a lot of people are picking up on, I've got to say, I do think it's taken a bit out of context. Now, at the beginning of this video, I did mention I don't think I can assuage some of your fears. That's because of a lot of the other stuff in this article, some of which I've already mentioned. But when we talk about the quote itself, they're referring to the fact that they don't want the Halo TV show to be strictly limited to the confines of a video game, which in isolation makes a lot of sense. If you limited yourself to telling the perspective of Halo CE, there's really not a way to tell that without expanding on the story. If you're limiting yourself to Halo CE as a game, there's not a movie there because it's not laid out like a movie. It's laid out like a video game. That doesn't mean that the ideas that were first found in the game won't be considered, and I think the following quote somewhat acknowledges that. The richness in the depth of the universe was immediately kind of mind-boggling, adds Schreiber, and incredibly exciting because what it means as a storyteller is that there's already been a huge amount of preparation and groundwork. So whether that's reflected in the final product or not, I guess we'll see. It's definitely felt to me like this is a very different universe than the ones in the current Halo canon that we know and love, but just generally, I think talking about the ideas and whatnot rather than simply the game is a good idea. Now, I say rather than just the game, but I also think the game plays an important role too. A lot of what made Halo CE as a campaign experience so successful is the way it makes you feel, the scale of it, what it's like to walk under the ring for the first time. Those are things that you can't get from expanded universe material and that I think make Halo Halo. So in that context, I think it's very important to talk about the game. And that's why I also would have liked somebody who is a diehard Halo fan to be the one directing and also just generally in control of the show. Steven Spielberg is name dropped as a Halo fan a lot. He's working as I believe executive producer. That is often more ceremonial than anything else. Later on in the article though, Kiki Wolfkill talks about how they were having trouble tying a new TV show or also at stages a movie into the game just due to sort of the rigidity of storytelling. And I actually understand that and I've long been somebody who's not super concerned about canon. I'm more about making overall good story set within the universe. That's why I love Star Wars Vision so much, at least as a concept, even if some of the individual stories fell flat. If they would have managed to tell a story, or I guess I should say if they do manage, I haven't seen the show yet, if they do manage to tell a story that captures the spirit of Halo, that makes me feel like I felt when playing Halo for the first time, at least from a storytelling perspective, if they can capture all of that into a new story that doesn't abide by canon, then canon doesn't matter to me. I don't care. I'm totally cool with that. My main problem is it feels like they've ignored canon, but also ignored a lot of the themes and the tone and the other sort of intangibles inherent in Halo as a video game and as a universe. Again, I haven't seen it yet though, so I can't say for certain. I'm not going to say the show is bad or that the show's season one will be a disaster or anything like that. I just haven't seen it yet. Kiki has another interesting comment which sort of resonated with me. She says, it feels familiar and different at the same time. I hope people will be excited about that. Do you want it to be exactly the way you've already played it and seen it? I'm not sure. It will be interesting to see how fans respond. Totally. Yeah. I think it's always good to have fresh takes on a medium, but again, with the caveats that I mentioned before. The rest of the article talks about a few specific narrative changes, the most important one probably being the role of Master Chief, whether the series would take on a more classic Showtime space drama-esque storyline where they focus on the lives of the individual Spartans. It seems like, in this case, that wasn't what they went with. But yeah, do I think the quote from the article is being taken somewhat out of context and being used a bit as rage bait? Definitely. Is there reason to be concerned? Yes. Yes, I also think there is. What do you guys think though? Let me know down below and of course I will be attempting to do reviews and discussions for this show on the YouTube channel. Every single video I've done on this so far has gotten copyright flag so I'm not about to work with Showtime and Paramount if they're gonna nail me every time and take my videos down or limit where I can show them or limit my ads. So we'll see how that works out. But until next time, guys, have a good one, be safe, and may the force be with you. A fairly scandalous headline has Halo fans angry and worried. Is the Halo show abandoning what makes Halo great or are people looking a little too deep into things? We'll discuss that and more on today's video.